Hey YouTube, Electric Adventures here with the next video in my Electric Adventures The Games um, where I'm going through uh, my original titles I wrote back in the early to mid 80s for the um, first the original Spectre video and then I converted them to MSX um, the last video we will doing Othello Challenger on Program Pack 2 now the fourth program that came on there is Painter which is just a, a paint drawing program I'm gonna skip that one and maybe I did a couple of utility programs like a sprite editor, that painter, and later on a, um, an even better art program called Video Graffiti that supported the mouse, but I think I'll cover them in a later video because this series is called Electric Adventures The Games, and they don't really count as games. So we move on to Program Pack 3, and there are a rather lot of these Program Packs. Uh, we get up to um, definitely into double, well into double digits. So number three has two, and they're both really good games. This is one of my um, biggest selling program packs. Um, obviously the first two were on the market for the longest and had lots on them, but this is where the games start getting a bit better. Um, and we have, so program pack three, we've got Bomb Scare and Dungeon Adventurer. Um, looking forward to both of them, because I'm, I'm really proud of both of these games. Right, so this one we'll have a look at Bomb Scare. So we'll do the gameplay first. Uh, we'll a, so look on our, uh, and of course, all these games are available on Electric Adventures Classic on an, a floppy if you've got an MSX. Um, I've got to figure out a way of um, releasing these. I mean, you can download them from a website as well, so no, no charge for that. Um, and as I'm doing each of these, I'm improving the article on my website, and I'm going to improve, uh, do some improvements to my website eventually as well. All right, so bomb scare. Let's just get straight into it. It's a little bit longer thing. So still under the moniker of Unisoft when this was written. A little bit inconsistent with that. Uh, Unisoft was really the name I used when I do the Spectre video titles and I didn't bother changing them um, even though I was well and truly electric, electric adventures by this stage. So Bomb Scare, I've gone with a um, double overlaid line drawing of the title which is a little bit fancy. I started um, double drawing the text one pixel over just to make it a little bit bolder as well so you can see that drawing. I'm just going to use the keyboard. Right, so this actually used a Define character and then draws it to the screen so it takes a little time, bit of time this is basic after all but it gives it a very nice looking presentation so here's our man I'm using a double sprite for him he's got a couple of frames of animation climb up the ladders uh, we need to go over here we need to miss that Oops. And there is a teeny weeny bit of little lag on your controls, so because it is written in basic and there's a lot going on. Well, there's three things and yourself moving on the screen here. Right, got our first bomb. Now you only have a certain time to clear the screen. Okay, let's see if I can do this. And you can't see what time is. Oh, it's reasonably forgiving on those. Thank goodness. Right, let's go and do the reverse. So there we go. Now let's see if I can make this get. Oh, just. Now I think there's there's at least ten levels in here too, so. Um, I could have been nice and actually put an indicator of how much time you've got to go, but I suppose that adds to the suspense. Here we go. A little bit of a flashy screen effect there. And now we go to level two. And I think it makes, you know, an enjoyable, quite presentable game. And of course, harks back to, you know, my like of many minor type games got to put some leniency on those platform lands now 
I have no idea whether I can make it over there, but we'll soon find out. No. I'm actually doing better than I expected I would. Oh no! And I hexed myself. Last life. Oh, let's see if we can get to level 3. That's, the old talking while playing games never works, does it? idea it's, it's bomb scare so the bombs are ticking down probably on retrospect probably could have had an animation of the sprite um, so that the you know the clock face change but yeah only do so much per frame here we go here's level three so I suppose they're getting more places that you've only got one way to get to them and I do believe that Hole, you know, a uh, platform with a hole in it is moving a little faster. Ah, mistimed it. Game over. So, in a way, there's my take on Manic Miner. So let's go and have a little bit of the code. Obviously this code is going to be a lot more complicated and it's a little bit harder to take you through the lot. So let's just see how long it is. You know, I do expect this to be a bit longer. Yeah, you getting up there? And obviously by this stage I was getting a lot more techniques. So we have a big chunk of data at the end, um, quite a few different sprites, the character definition, and also all our level data, which is that block at the end. Um, let's to the start. So we do a bit of setup there. The, the, what I've covered in previous one. We display our title screen. We read in all of our things. That's why it takes a little bit longer to start. Um, then we use the draw command. See the draw command on line 40 there. Um, it allows you to draw with a turtle uh, like command. So color nine. Um, I can't remember what it in. I'll not draw right 15 down 40. So it starts, yeah, so you have to set a current point where you start from, uh, an origin, and then you just do transit. Right 15. Um, I can't remember what it is. Anyway, uh, up 10, H5. Yeah, there's extra command. I'd have to look them up myself in my book. Um, but anyway, the draw commands are very similar to turtle um, commands um, or um, uh, logo, I suppose. Uh, it's not one of the languages to use those. And you can see I've got two sets of statements there and I draw them um, just offset from each other so we get our title. So very simple way and rather than have lots of, you know, line, uh, lots of line statements, we can put a lot of information in those couple of lines. This is why you can do very well in a, um, a, um, a you know, 10 line basic competition in MSX Basic. Right, so all that's all about our titles and our high score there. Let's go to the next section. Uh, okay, and then we grab our press trigger bing, and then we wait we look at either the keyboard one, which is the trig, the trig zero, and trig one is the first joystick, and we loop around in there, and then we set up all of our game variables. We um, go and put a lot of just doing a look there, just setting up some sprites and things like that. Or is that our character? Is that setting up our character? Yes, that's writing our um, character design to memory, yeah, to video memory. So that's the little the little bricks and the ladder. Those two shapes would be loaded over a particular character in the character set. Um, I put the high score 
and the score down the bottom and the level down the bottom. I did notice while I was playing the game that level didn't seem to increase, so we might have found a bug there. Okay, now we read our array, so that went off the screen. This is probably this would be drawing our actual layout for the particular level we're on. You can see it it's reading an XY coordinate, then it reads an um, Okay, so the first bit it goes and puts the um, the actual bombs on the screen there, line one twenty something went off the screen a little bit, it probably would have been the um, the actual platforms first, and then I reckon line one twenty would be the ladders. So the number of ladders for each ladder it finds. It it has a um, yeah, obviously a position and a um, and a length. So that's pretty good. Line one thirty. We uh, set up all our initial positions of our main sprite, put him on the screen, we clear out our sound buffers, we look at the joystick, so this is part of our main loop now, so from one th um, from this part onwards, um, and we look at the direction of the joystick, adjust our man's position. Uh, oh, interesting, on line 150, I don't know how to cover that one, the point command actually tells you the colour of a point at a particular spot, so I'm using that to see whether your man underneath his feet has fallen down and it's based on the direction you're facing. Okay, let me set it to, to see if it fits on the screen. I'm probably pushing it a little bit. There we go. Um, more direction adjustment, more looking underneath our feet for another couple of lines there. Um, I think line 210 might be us falling down and adjust because I can see the sound being adjusted there. Um, so you know, I shift in, in a full mode. Um, and a bit more there. So, so no comments in the code because there wasn't room back then. Yeah. So line 230 would be placing our man in his appropriate spot. A bit of mess there to figure out which shape to use, um, based on what we're doing. Then we look at the joystick and see whether we want to go into, uh, I suppose, jump mode. the next line. I think the next one is actually going through hole. so H I would assume would be holes so that's going through each of the holes on the screen which is just we're just using actually just using a sprite that's black to put over the the line and we're moving that sprite so that's how we're getting away with that and making that that black spot move and then the line 260 P's would be the little platforms you can see it's all still done in basic, no machine code helping out here. But as long as you keep everything efficient and only change what you need to change by using the video v, v peaks and V pokes, you can get a lot done. Um, okay, and, then, and actually line two, an important one. Um, BO is our bomb countdown, so it goes down by ten every time. If we reach zero, then 470. Yep. Yeah, okay. And if it's less than 500, then we start making a sound. So it must be a, like a warning tick, tick, tick sound. And then we go around our loop again. So that's pretty cool. So line 300 must be a subroutine. Doing some string manipulation there. Um, line 310 is another subroutine. We're doing some more string manipulation. It must be reading some data. And we play a little tune. So that might even be the end of the level thing there. Or is it dying? No, I think we've died because. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. Once again, no comments in the code. But as you can see, it's. um. There's a lot of code in this one. Right, so I've let four. And we need some subroutines here. Oh, look, there's a game over there. So that probably was the. Um, you know, checking how many lives we had left and everything like that. Um, now, these subroutines here looks 360 to 370s a subroutine going and probably our collision detection with our platforms, our holes and then the last one here at 400 would be with the bombs. So we're, and we're trying to get all the bombs on the screen. Can nut it out but um, it would be nice if I'd had had room so for some REM statements. Eh? Um, so yeah we're also line 400 and well, this 
420 we're going through and erasing all of the um, sprites uh, we're clearing all the sound buffers and we're putting the bonus up so this is end of our end of level uh, condition and we put, um, play some sound level complete I'm trying to see if I can see the bit that flashes the um, uh, we did have a function there, oh, but random. Okay, so that's the uh, that's our random function, <coughs> and just quickly, very quickly, change the color. And then when we're finished going through that loop a few times, we go back to line one hundred. So four seventy two five twenty. Oops. Ooh, just fit on the screen. Um, another subroutine that clears out some sound and plays some sound. I think that's the game over uh, explosion type thing flashing all the colours. It like, seems to be cycling through a loop of colours. Um, then we go into some more subroutines by the looks of it. Um, yeah, I think these are the actual drawing routines. Pretty much all of those down there. There's a really long line down at line 520 there. Yeah, I think these are all to do with drawing our actual levels. Okay, I'm not going to go analyze those at the moment because they'll be too hard to explain without making a full map of the game. I'll leave that up to you guys. Once again, source code is freely downloadable for you guys to have a look. Yeah, you see, lots of this is reading the data in our structures to draw all the levels, and there's a lot of code here. So. Oh my god, I was certainly on par when I was writing this, wasn't I? They're all very similar routines. We've got no idea of figuring out what they're doing without really getting into it right, and then we're up to our data. So we've got a whole lot of subroutines here used to draw the different platforms and objects in their various spots. So I'll leave that up to you guys to have a bit of a look and dive in. Um, I hope everybody is enjoying the series. I'm actually quite um, liking going back and revisiting my old games. This is definitely one of my um, one of my favourites from back in the day uh, because it was a big manic miner nut. So in a way, this is my salute and take of manic miner on the um, on the Spectre Video and MSX because obviously on the Spectre Video I couldn't buy those sort of games. Um, MSX did get manic miner, but that was obviously later. Um, and I wanted those games. Now I do have a later game uh, called Gold Rush, which we'll get to in I think tape four. I think this. What which is the next tape? Um, or it could even be five. A bad memory. Um, that is probably more like Manic Miner than this one is. With this one, I tried to, you know, add a bit more of my own concept to. Also, I hope you're enjoying the better audio now that I finally figured out how to record separate audio tracks. Not that there's a lot of audio in this game, it's only got a few thump thump sounds and falling sounds and things like that, but hopefully it should improve these videos going forward. Alright, I'm Electric Adventures, thanks to all my subscribers, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.